Okay, guys, let's take a look at this. Then we're going to look at some live price action uh, this morning. Um, so let's take a look at what we're packaging together on the two different strategies and indicators that we have. Let's look at today's price action, um, and let's go over what we're looking at. So we have two di different types of setups in the trade room. We have the retracement setup. Retracement setup. And that is comprised of the outer edge slingshot. And failure setups. And failure setup. All right, so the failure setup, we'll just leave that off there because of the slingshot. I want to go over the, the, the most here today in this video. But um, we, we know we have the retrace. Let's go over the retracement setup first, the outer edge slingshot setup. Uh, the 120.20 yesterday yesterday on the NASDAQ, future, NASDAQ futures had over 20 of these trades. And I'm going to go over exactly what we want to look for and how the indicator is going to show you and, and it's going to turn yellow, the price bar, when it gets on an outer edge. And then also the strategy will fire at this level also. So um, let's take a look at some price action. We had some price action here this morning off the NQ. So what is a retracement uh, outer edge slingshot? Um, if you look in the previous videos, you know a slingshot um, is a simple retracement with overall trend direction. So we have, um, we have our zone. Now this is the wave file that you're going to get as far as an indicator and also a strategy. So the wave indicator and strategy will have um, both. Um, sorry, I got the demo in the background running here. So the um, wave strategy will have both the um, the indicator and the strategy. So what it's going to do is it's going to uh, highlight when we are at an outer edge, meaning an outer edge trade with overall trend direction. So we have our zone here. This is our our zone. So this zone, we all know about it. Um, all members know that if it's green, we're in an uptrend. If it's red, we're in a downtrend. Um, uh, pretty much, you know, exactly what we have been talking about over the last few months. If you are in an uptrend, we're looking for retracement buys. If we're in a downtrend, if it's red, we're looking for retracement sells. And uh, this particular setup, this I call it an outer edge slingshot. It's on my outermost zone. Um, these zones have been tested for over the last 30 years. Um, and these are, uh, both these zones together have been tested. And we know that these are the top zones that came out um, from our retracement um, setups and our settings as far as where the market should continue, have a continuation trade to the upside or a continuation trade to the downside. So what is a particular setup and how can we utilize it as an indicator or strategy? Um, so what you can do is, is that you can use the indicator or you can actually do uh, use it as a strategy entry. What does that mean? It means that when you come down to, here, hold on one second, let me turn these off here. Let me get these off real quick. There we go. Is that um, if you come down to the zone and you close by a one candle outside of the zone, it's just got to close one or more candles outside of this outer zone. That's called an outer edge slingshot waiting to happen. So what has to happen is, is you have to get outside of this outer zone. All right. So this is my outer zone. So the trend is up. It's green. That's the trend. It's up. It's green. So we want to see if we can close below this outer zone first. Once we close below this outer zone, close above or below this outer zone, then what we want to do is we want to see a close back inside of this outer zone. So once you get a close back inside of this outer zone, you're going to get a reversal. And that's when you're going to get the indicator and the alarm's going to go off on your computer. So once you get 
outside this threshold, meaning this outer zone, if it closes outside of it and then closes back inside of it, then you're going to get an arrow that prints at that swing low or if you're selling at that swing high. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that if you, if you are looking to only trade retracements, there's a couple of ways you're going to do it. This, this bar is going to print yellow when it closes back inside of the zone. So it's first got to get outside of the zone to the outer edge. It's got to close at least one or more candles outside that zone. It cannot trend change. I mean, it cannot go from green to red before it closes back inside the zone. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to qualify if this outer edge is going to hold. And this is this morning's trade on the NQ. Is it going to hold if we close outside this outer edge? If it does not hold and we keep getting closes below it, you're going to get a red trend change and these zones are going to turn red. There's not going to be a trade then. The strategy will not take a trade and this yellow bar will not print. Or this yellow um, candle will not highlight. It will highlight if it does this qualification. If you get a close below the outer zone, and you close below the outer zone, and you get a close back inside of that zone, that yellow, that candle is going to print yellow, just like it does on our breakouts. This is a retracement trade, though. It's going to print yellow. Once it prints yellow, you know as a trader that you have reached the outer edge on a retracement into the outer zone with overall trend direction. So you're looking for a snapback trade. For you traders that have the, uh, the older version of the software, meaning the version you have now, you'll be getting this newer version, you can go back this weekend and pull up a 120-20 chart on the NASDAQ futures or a 125-25, and you can look at the price action all week long. If you look at yesterday off the 120-20, it had over 20 trades like this where it gets to the outer zone and then it likes to punch upwards. Now, where's your stop at? Your stop is going to be just outside this threshold. Your stop is going to be the swing low of that bar. So that bar is going to be swing low. So if you're going to strategy trade it, now under the strategy, under the wave, we do have an ATR trail for it that, that will trail the ATR trail. That's an ATR trail that goes with it. Uh, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to get out to this outer zone, and you'll see tons of trades like this today. Um, that happens into the NQ has a lot of trades. Like I said, for you members, check it out. There's a, over 20 some trades yesterday off the 120.20. Uh, the S&P, the largest swing low yesterday was an outer edge slingshot trade that pushed the market also. And so um, this gives you an opportunity using the indicator strategy to A, get into these swings with a strategy or B, use the indicator if you use chart trader or what have you and it will turn these um, it will turn yellow for you. So uh, at that if it qualifies, it's got to qualify. So I, I have it set where I've, I've got I, I removed all shallow retracement slingshots. Why did I do that? Upon testing the software over months and months and months of software testing, what I found is what we don't want to see is, is have shallow retracements only to get that low taken out. What I have found with testing the software is the outer edge is your most reliable setup on a slingshot. What does that mean? The market is getting stretched right to my outer zone. We've already tested my outer zone for the past 30 years. So we knew, we knew going into this that this, these zones are very reliable. Well, if it's going to reverse at these zones, what's the best optimal spot to reverse for price action for the highest probability trade? The highest probability trade is when it gets stretched outside of the zone and closes right back inside the zone. And this creates a natural snapback in the market and a continuation. So this is called a retracement setup outer edge slingshot trade. This is a toggle switch on the wave program that you that we're packaging together for you members so not only will you can do it two ways like I said there's an indicator that goes with this where the alarm will beep 
not an annoying sound. It's like a doorbell that will beep. Right when this yellow bar forms, you're going to get a beep. It doesn't matter what market you trade. You can trade the Dow. The Dow had some good trades like this yesterday. Russell 2000 did. Russell had a, at 930 had a huge short like this. I showed some of you traders yesterday on this outer edge trade. Uh, NASDAQ, uh, S&P, whatever it is. If you trade the indicator, that yellow candle is going to go around. It's going to uh, go around that, that bar that qualifies. The alarm is going to go off on your speakers. So that's the indicator side of it. If you want to trade the strategy side of it, the strategy side of it, um, you have an opportunity to trade the strategy side of it for you strategy traders. And uh, with your hard stop, you'll have a hard ATR trail. Because what I found is, uh, is I found these outer edge, tra outer edge trades, those can typically be your highest probability swing um, on any given market you know, for that session. So the stops, you have a hard stop that you can put in also. Um, the easy way to think about it is the stop should be at that swing low depending on what Renko size you use. Uh, this is a, on the NASDAQ futures, this is a 125.25. Uh, you can use a 120.20 on the S&P, 120.20 on the NASDAQ futures. This worked well yesterday off the 120.20 also. Um, so your stop would be just outside of your your qualification bar. So if your qualification bar is yellow, your stop's going to be below that yellow threshold. And then um, your ATR trail can be put in how you want to trail. If you want to put it out to 1,000 ticks, do one contract with a hard stop of 20 ticks and do one contract with a 1,000 tick target then it will, it will get you out right here. This was the last thousand tick target here. Um, it got long at that 84 and a quarter and it ended up getting out at 0175 because the ATR got you out the trailing ATR. So that's, that's a retracement setup. So that, that, that's an indicator based and strategy based. This is called my wave file. Like I said, what I did and the reason um, uh, that we tested the software I was finding the shallow retracements are just not consistent enough uh, when these arrows fire. So what I did is I removed all shallow retracements. What does that mean? I removed the, the, the momentum, mom momos, and so on. The reason I did that is that we have a zone breakout strategy you can use for that. So now you can get deep retracements. The more I, more I work with this software, and then we can get number two, we can get zone breakouts. And these are momentum trades. You have a strategy that goes with this. This is when the bars turn yellow in the room, as you guys know. These are zone breakouts. When does this come up? So then you have a strategy that, uh, or an indicator where the bars turn yellow when you get a breakout. So there's two types of, of trades that you do in the trading room. There's one, you'll do the retracement setup that's an outer edge trade, and there's two that's going to be a zone breakout, right? Now, I do have a failure trade that's with this wave file. Um, the first wave is, is the best first waves are an outer edge trade, I found. And so um, those are your best waves. The momos are already built into the zone, so I made it very, very simple. Is that the retracement wave indicator is going to have the outer edge slingshot as a toggle switch, and you're going to have a failure as your toggle switch. If you just want to take outer edge trades that are qualified on the outer edge, you can only take these trades by themselves. It will not get you in a shallow retracement. It will only look for deep retracements only because those are the highest probability trade you're going to have instead of taking a lot of shallows that could get that swing low or swing high taken out uh, on, a, um, on a, a, a more of a chance taken out than on a deeper retracement. So then we have a zone breakout. So what's a zone breakout? The zone breakout then uh, would be where you have a market where you're already starting, right? So this is the zone breakout. So the zone breakout is where you are already moving from this swing low, right? You're moving out of this swing low. And what happens is these zone breakouts, you guys have seen them in the room. I have them in the room now on the crude oil, NASDAQ, and the S&P. 
what you're going to find is there's an order to this. The order to this is that we come out of a zone, meaning an outer zone, and then we fire the zone breakouts. So the zone breakouts will also, if you notice, let me get J-Wave off here, or the wave file. So you can see that this is where the zone, this is where it likes to break. This is called a zone breakout. So we know, and these zone breakouts only go with the overall trend of the um, of our Oni Rinko bar, and then also of the uh, swing that it just came into this lower high. So you, these will not be counter trend trading. These will be with trend only. These are with trend only. I do have a counter switch on there, which we'll go over in the next session. I don't want to go over that today because I want you guys to get the trend in your head correct. You don't have to use the counter, uh, but th these are both with trend because this swing low right there is with trend because our zones were up. This is the breakout trade. So these are the only two trades that you need to focus on using our methodology. You're going to focus on the retracement setups. A retracement setup comprises all my setups that you guys were taught in the past, only now the indicator does it for you automatically on printing a yellow, um, a yellow bar and then the breakout trade. So in the past, we've had uh, the first wave setup. This is where you get a trend change here, right? Here's a trend change. And here's your first wave. So this this literally is a first wave. So what I found testing the software, the first wave, uh, if it's shallow, really you don't punch a lot to the upside or downside. It's very, it, it just, it doesn't give you a nice punch. What I did find is, is your first wave setups with the slingshot in an outer wave, that's your best possible run. So what I did is I just made it simple, is um, I just, the, 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 the deep outer wage slingshot is typically a first wave outer edge trade. Now, it doesn't have to be a first wave, though. We can get an outer edge trade after the first, second, third, or fourth wave. I programmed it that way. My point is, is that the, the, what I found is, is that with the first wave, uh, your best trade is the outer edge trade with the first wave. So the Momo trade, let's get into that. We talked about the Momo in the past. The Momo is literally a zone breakout. That's what it is. Only the zone breakout is more effective because the zone breakout is actually going with trend only, and which the Momo did also, but you have more of a possible punch to the zone breakout because you have the backing of your wave on your outer edge trade. So these are the these are the type these are the two type of strategies you're going to be uh, on the member download page that that we that we are packaging together with you guys and um, you can trade them individually or together as an indicator or you can use it as a strategy on both but let me be clear on something the retracement setup is with the toggle switch on the outer edge slingshot will only take these deep retracements like I said, if you are a member that has a software, go back and look at the accuracy of the deep retracements getting back to inside. When they do fail, um, the, the, your stop is very limited because you know it's that swing low. And you don't get a lot of deep, deep, deep retracements. So, you know, just like right now, we're breaking out. We just broke out just now a second ago. This is a zone breakout that just happened on the S&P here at 845. Uh, this is a trade that just happened just now. So this is momentum right here. So right, right. This is momentum, momentum. So this is a zone breakout trade, you know, with the software. So, you know, this can be traded individually as an indicator or a strategy. Now, what you're going to find is that if you're trading momentum, when you get outside of market profile, these work really, really well with momentum. Um, as you can tell, I'm a big fan of market profile since 1985. Um, these zone breakouts, they they're already have a trend filter built in them, so it likes to push with that overall trend direction. 
which is real nice on how we want to do it. So if you look, uh, we have, like I said, two type of setups then that you're going to uh, uh, you're gonna have on your own charts. Now what we have is we, we are going to have this on your own. We'll have the workspace set up for you already. Um, I do have a confirmation. If you trade indicator, I do have a confirmation uh, set up. I mean, um, oscillator down there for you also in the workspace. But let's just summarize this one more time to make sure you guys understand this. So if I take the um, if I take the 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 zone breakout off, and I take the wave off. All right, so here, here, here's your blank chart we're working with, right? This is a 125.25 of the NASDAQ futures. If you want to look for only outer edge trades, then you would use the wave file. The wave file is looking for strictly, it's got to close at least a minimum of one, one or more candles outside of my outer zone. And then once it does that, once it closes outside of my outer zone, Right, it closes one candle outside the outer zone, and then as soon as it closes back inside of that outer zone, this outer zone, you'll have a yellow candle that prints. So the indicator will make an alarm on your computer, or the strategy will go long with your targets and your stops. Now, I have four targets on the wave file. I have six targets on the breakout file, the zone breakout. You don't have to trade up to four targets. So in other words, this breakout that just happened on the S&P a second ago, if you want to trade one contract, you can do that. You just go down and change that. Um, what, I, what I'm doing, though, is that, that you're getting this with your software, um, which, Thomas, thank you for bringing this up. I am adding the ATR to the breakout. The reason I didn't add the ATR here trailing like the 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 the, um, uh, the wave file is because they're typically one directional. You get a hard push up, and it really pushes up harder down, and then you, it it evaporates, right? But some of these pushes are hard, like the S, uh, the Nasdaq futures. As some of you guys trade the Nasdaq, sometimes you'll get pushes on a breakout like yesterday. We had. We had four pushes that where the market moved over 10 points. So you know, so you know, you get these moves like this. If you have a good ATR trail, it works in your favor. So that is one thing um, that the zone will have uh, breakout like the wave file here. So, like I said, you have two types of subs. You have the retracement, the outer edge slingshot. That's this. That's where you're looking for this outer edge trade. You're looking for it to close below. The, the candle will turn yellow with an alarm. It makes it very user friendly. This software is, is very, very user friendly. Or you can strategy into it also with an ATR trail. All shallow retracements have been moved because of performance. The performance was less on shallow retracements versus deep retracements. Deep retracements won. Um, one by a wide margin. I removed all the shallow retrace, all the shallows on the wave file. It's only going to look if you could uh, toggle switch slingshot on. It's only going to look for deep retracements. Period. That's it. Okay. So that's that. Then, if you do not, if you want the zone uh, trader on top of that to trade with it, you can run these files together at the same time. This is the zone breakout that I keep sending charts out to everybody. And the, the reason I came up with the zone traders, this zone breakout trader, is that this is typically when the market is blowing off or blow off rally or blow off sell off. Because it's already established a low on an outer edge swing and so on. So if I'm a trader and I, I, I'm very familiar with the software, what you're going to find is this. Your best zone breakouts, and this is if you trade the indicator or strategy, your best zone breakouts are going to happen when you come out of an outer edge trade. What does that mean? If you get a full retracement on the outer edge and it gets a candle, candle or more closes outside and closes back inside and you get this yellow bar that prints 
on an outer edge trade. If you don't want to take these, these trying to get these swing lows or swing highs based upon an outer edge a slingshot, the next breakout is your highest probability breakout you're going to have. Why? Because this is already set in an outer edge possible lower high, swing high, and typically momentum will come in for a continuation. So, but can you run them separately? Absolutely. If you want to run them separately, you take your wave file off, and then you can run just the breakout strategy by itself. Uh, I, 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 with most traders, you'll probably have them both on. That's why we're packaging these on at the same time. I was just going to send this out uh, to you um, on the first one. I was going to send this out to you on the first one by itself, this WAV file. But the more I thought about it, um, we're going to send the workspace out and the WAV file means outer edge trade with the overall breakout together. It's going to be a one. Uh, it's going to be a one workspace type deal where everything's already on one chart. That's why you can toggle it on, toggle it off, and have these two different type of setups: your deep retracement or your zone breakout. And like I said, if you want to do the zone breakouts, you can do those by themselves. Or if you want to have them both on there together, um, you can have those both on there together if you guys want to do that also. All right, as far as the workspace goes, get this off here. So here was our breakout that just happened on the S&P. So if you're doing an indicator based, you can see that here the S&P broke out. Um, so this was this was not an outer edge trade. It never got below, never got two candles below my outer edge. This is more of a shallow retracement. The strategy will not go long at this level. It will wait for an outer edge. But this is a breakout where the strategy will get long on this breakout. The reason being is, is that we broke the outer edge. I mean, we, we had a zone breakout with the overall trend direction. So these, this is how your workspace is going to be set up. Um, coming out to you guys uh, with this uh, oscillator below. This oscillator below is really neat. So if you just want, if you want to trade in the indicator-based system, this oscillator will tell you if you're in a weak or a strong market going into that um, either the deep retracement right there. It confirmed that that was a buy setup right here at this level because it got above 100 on this candle in a retracement into a stronger market. That's confirmation the S&P should start moving. That was 18 a quarter. The swing has been 28. It moved 10 S&P points, getting into a strong market with confirmation of a swing low. On the breakout, it confirms the breakouts too. This breakout bar will turn yellow. Once it turns yellow, that confirms that the market is breaking out. You have a choice as a user to, to let it know how many candles you want as a breakout. I have it set at three candles, one, two, three. You can set it as one is your breakout on a strategy or indicator, two, three, you know, depending on what market you want to make sure it clears that breakout zone. I have it set to three candle breakout right there, just so we, we can clear possible M tops or W bottoms. All right, but this is how the workspace is going to be set up uh, for you guys. Um, and then, um, uh, like I said, we'll have the strategy next to it. So we'll have it set up like this. We're going to have the strategy set up next to it. So we're going to have the indicator based system over here and the strategy right next to it so you can see it running. And like I said, these um, uh, what's neat about it is these triggers, I call them triggers to pull in. Um, th th that's a nice trigger to pull in at that level uh, would be the breakout buy this morning on the S&P. And you, like I said, you can do it either way. You can do it where you have, um, you can have a deep zone retracement if you want or what have you. Um, or you can have the zone breakout. So, you know, it, it's totally up to you how you want to do that. If you're doing this on your own, where you're looking at these levels uh, on these deep level breakouts or breakdowns. So if you look, if you look at the indicator here, 
here we're in a deep zone, right? So here's two candles below. That's a one, two candle below. It's got to close back inside. If you if you are manually trading this, if you get a trend change right here, if you get a trend change, there's no longer a sell setup. So you only have two sell setups right now in the Nasdaq futures. I have one here. If we break down below here, it'll turn a yellow breakdown zone bar. If I get a See, it's closing one candle here. If it closes back inside, arrow fire. So this is our zone breakout. I mean, this is our, our sell. So this is the only two setups you can have that you're going to get in the trading room. All right. So here's our sell. See how it closed one candle outside. So on your new update, this is going to turn a yellow candle as soon as it does that. This is live action right now in the NASDAQ futures. So it's going to turn a yellow candle right there as soon as it qualifies and reverses. It's going to be like that, right? So, like I said, there's only two setups. You have your outer edge zone. My outer edge just hit on the NASDAQ futures right now. So this is my outer zone. These are very, very accurate. Like I said, we had over 20 of these trades yesterday. Outer zone trade. Look at it react out of my zone. Outer edge trade. Outer edge slingshot, sorry. Remember, these zones were tested over 30 years. We know these zones like to reject price on, on any given market. Look at the reaction we're getting live right now on the outer edge zone. Now, the next trade I want you to watch is my momentum trade, my zone breakdown. If it closes below here by by a couple candles, which is three, it's going to turn a yellow bar. Okay, so this is already short right now on the strategy, but it will turn a yellow bar here, like it does over here back at the on on breakouts. If we turn, I don't know if I have this one set up on it. Let me make sure. Oh, I have. I don't have it turned on. Okay, so let me turn this thing on. The yellow bar will break out automatically right here on the breakdown. Right there, you'll see a yellow bar, a yellow candle, I'm sorry, for the breakdown. So you got two types of setups, like I said. You can see how it reacts out of my outer zone. These outer zones are just really neat little setups. One second. So this is called a zone breakdown. So you'll have a zone break. I mean, it's better to show the strategy working right here. So this is this is the strategy working right now. So this is a zone breakdown. So here's your outer edge zone. It's easier to show on this chart. One second. You can see my outer zone, how, how neat this setup is. All right, so we closed. You saw this live happen live here a second ago. I close one candle outside the outer zone. Now, your software, which I'm, I'm putting this in the software, your software is going to have this turn yellow. This candle is going to turn yellow. All right? That's going to tell you you're at the outer zone. That's going to turn yellow. Right when that closes back inside, you saw that live trade. You see how neat this setup is. You see why I love it so much. So here is your cell. So this is called the outer zone slingshot. Go back and play the video. You'll see this was live, how it was coming out of the zone, how it reacted out, out of it. We were playing this video live when it was right in here. Look at this reaction out of the zone. That's your outer zone slingshot. This is a retracement trade we went over this morning. And then it'll turn yellow, you turn a yellow candle when you break down, and this is your zone breakdown. Now what did I just say earlier in the video? I said earlier in the video that you're, oh, there's only two setups that you need to understand in the trade room. You need to understand these outer zone slingshots. We can, you can run separately from the zone breakdown. Well, what I say the best zone breakdown is, the best zone breakdown happens after an outer zone slingshot is running. So let's say you want to do this. You don't want to run the zone breakdown all day long. Or you do. It's up to you. 
and you want and you don't want to run it all day long. But if you see an outer zone breakdown that's starting to happen at 850 uh, up up at this level, maybe you want to turn your zone breakdown in and try to get this big run. You can do that also. My point is, is the big runs typically happen after coming from an outer zone. Maybe some of you just want to trade the outer zone trade setup. I mean, look at this trade setup that's running. So because it's only comprised of two setups, right? We have our outer zone, which like I said, play the video back. This is live up here when it, I was talking about it, that we're looking for an outer zone trade. That's one setup. That's my, that's my retracement setup. And this is my zone breakdown setup. Now this outer trade's still running, right? It's not going to, we'll keep playing this. It's not going to sell the final contracts until my ATR zone is wrote. So the ATR is 17,581. So 17,581, it's still running. Now, what I want to do, because of Thomas, he made a good point. He's like, how do I get out of my last runner? Um, to, to simplify it, I'm just going to add this ATR zone, ATR trail to the zone breakdown also. It's already in right here with the outer zone sling, uh, slingshot. See, I'm still trailing. It's still trailing down. Now the trail is 76 and a half. So it's still trailing this outer zone slingshot. Now you see why I'm a huge fan of outer, sling, uh, outer zone slingshots. It's still running. This was a live trade that we saw playback in the video. I start talking about this trade up here before it pulled in right there. We're looking for an outer zone. So what it will do, it will still trail until we get this last uh, position off. So there's, like I said, two ways to do it. You can get the outer zone slingshot trade at that level if you want it, or you can get the zone breakdown, or you can run both strategies at the same time. That's totally up to you. I'm going to let this play, Gerald, until this thing gets stopped out so I can see the stop out on the last contract. Once it closes above this ATR trail, it's going to stop out. And that trade's going to be over. All right, now it just stopped out. There it is. This was an outer zone trade that we saw. Uh, like I said, go back in the video. Um, this was price action was coming up here when I'm showing you the charts. And right there where my arrow's at, I said this, we're looking for an outer zone trade as we speak. It did not pull in yet on the video we just did. And it pulled in right there. And that's the type of uh, result we got on that last outer little slingshot. So now you know why that I only program the uh, the retracement trade for the outer zone slingshot. Because you, the market's getting stretched. This was actually a first wave outer zone slingshot on the NASDAQ futures. All right. If you don't want that and you just want the zone breakdown, then the zone breakdown can happen there also. Okay. My point is, is that I've made this very user-friendly. The reason it took so long for this software to be programmed and all this stuff, of all the toggle switches I put in, everything like that, I try to make it as user-friendly as possible. These, these, these candles are turning yellow right at the outer zone when it qualifies to the exact candle where it should be the turning point in the market, to the exact candle. It should turn at that candle when it prints yellow with the alarm for possible high probability trades like this. To this candle right here, it'll turn yellow when the specified number of candles closes outside of the breakdown zone. I, and I'm making it very user friendly for you guys. So like I said, the reason that we're packaging this all together is that you can see I took all these setups that we've done over months and months and months and months and months and months and, months, and I put it into one outer zone slingshot. Now you can still trade the failure trade if you want, but the trap trade is basically the failure trade and the first wave and is the outer zone trade. So I just put them all into one setup, into an outer zone slingshot. And then the zone breakdown is basically a Momo trade, but it picks the best Momo of the bunch because it's picking the ultimate breakdown with overall trend. So what I did of all this setups that we've had over the years. I made it into two setups. I made it into a retracement, deep retracement setup, outer zone slingshot on this upgrade that we've done. That's why we've taken so long on getting the software out. And then I've done the zone breakdown. Now you get the best of both worlds. 
you have deep retracement trades only. Like I said, replay this video, and then you'll see how live action works up here. This was live as it's coming up in this, and you'll see the reaction you get from it. And then you get the zone breakdown here. Uh, you can do also. So it just, this software uh, will help the user or the trader look for only two setups. One retracement and two momentum. And like I said, before we shut this video off, it's a very informative video so you understand the software. We have one retracement. That retracement trade is the slink is the is the um, re retracement is the deep as the outer retracement is the um, is the outer slingshot. But that also is the first wave. That's an outer slingshot only. It won't take shallow retracements. Gosh dang it, my fingers aren't typing today. No shallow retracements. Only deep retracements. You can see why I love deep retracements on this trade that was running live when I did this video. No shallows will appear. That's the biggest upgrade to the software right there. Huge upgrade to the software right there. No shallows. Only deep retracements. Secondly, the alarm system that comes on. And these bars will turn yellow. Huge upgrade to the software. Then the breakdown, when, it's, when the market's breaking its back, big upgrade to the software with that also with the zone breakdown. So there's a retracement trade. Retracement trade encompasses the first wave already because we're only looking for deep outer zones. We don't need to take shallow first waves. They don't have the punch like these, these deep waves do. And the second one is our zone breakdown. This is basically the Momo that we traded for three, four years, right? But now I've got it going with the breaking point in the market. With trend. This is with trend. So that's the two setups. That's it. And then we're gonna and that's what we're packaging together for you members on the software.